Hi everybody, I'm Kat with Ada Kappa Nu, and today we're going to do a systems analysis problem. We have a closed loop transfer function, T of S, and our goal is to determine the stability using the Routh table. So with the Routh table, we have a number of rows that's equal to uh, one more than the order of this polynomial on the um, denominator. So we have S to the fifth, S to the fourth, and so on. And then we're going to determine values across here that will, um, once we look at the first column of the Ralph table, we look at the number of sign changes. Uh, so suppose we had a positive, 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 negative, and then a positive, we would have two sign changes because we'd go that positive, negative, and then negative, positive. And that would mean that we would have two poles in our right-hand plane, which would mean that we would have uh, an unstable uh, transfer function. So if we have uh, no sign changes in that first column when we're done, then our system is stable. So let's start. Uh, first, we're going to have we're gonna, what we do for the first row is we alternate every other one, every other coefficient. So we'd have one, three, five. So one, three, five, and then we're going to take the start with the second coefficient and alternate again. So we'd have two, uh, six, and three. Okay. Then the rest of the coefficients in the table we calculate based off of these first two rows and succeeding rows. So uh, we'll call this coefficient C1. And we calculate C1 by taking the negative of the determinant of uh, these two columns, like this, and dividing by the lower uh, left-hand value here. So. That would be uh, 2 times 3 minus 1 times 6 over 2. And we have 0. OK, now what happens is when we have 0, we don't want a 0 here, because when we um, calculate succeeding values, we would end up with a divide by 0 when we would calculate this row, the uh, values in this row. So what we are going to do is we're going to assign a value of epsilon, call it epsilon, that's going to be a small close to zero value. When we're done with the table, we will evaluate epsilon as it's approaching zero from the positive direction and as it's approaching zero from the negative direction. So we'll call this epsilon. Okay, so now we calculate C2. And C2 is going to be the determinant we're going to use this column and this column. And again, it's the negative determinant. So we have 2 times 5 minus 1 times 3 over 2. So that's 7 over 2, which is 3.5. So now we'll calculate, um, this will just be a zero because we don't have another column here, okay? So we can't do a, another negative determinant. Uh, so then we'll call this D1, and we're going to re basically repeat the process. We're going to take the negative determinant of these two columns, okay, divided by C1. So uh, for D1, we will have 6 epsilon minus 2 times 3.5 over epsilon. So we'll have 6 epsilon minus 7 over epsilon. Okay. And then for, we'll call this D2. So to calculate D2, we have epsilon times 3 minus 0 over epsilon, which is 3. OK, and again, we'll have a 0 here. So our next coefficient, we will call, let's call it uh, J1. So J1, 
will equal the negative determinant again. Taking these two columns, 6 epsilon minus 7 over epsilon times 3.5 minus 3 epsilon. And we divide that by 6 epsilon minus 7 over epsilon. Okay. So then J1, we can, uh, what we can do is we can multiply uh, by 2 epsilon on uh, the top and bottom right here. So we'll just do that. Make things easy for us. So we have 6 epsilon minus 7 times 7 minus 6 epsilon squared over 2 epsilon times epsilon over 6 epsilon minus 7. So we have 42 epsilon minus 49 minus 6 epsilon squared over 12 epsilon minus 14. So J1 equals that. Okay, and we have uh, no J2, so it'll just be a zero. Okay, if you take the uh, negative determinant. And then let's call our coefficient here K1. Okay, so K1 is going to be equal to the negative determinant here. So we have this value minus the, uh, 0 over this value times 3 uh, minus 0 over this value. So we're just going to end up with a 3. Okay. And then for here again we have 0. Okay, so now let's uh, consider epsilon as it, uh, as it approaches 0 from the positive direction and as it approaches 0 from the negative direction. So we'll have epsilon approaches 0 positive and 0 negative. And we're going to consider the sign changes in this first column. So we have 1, so it's positive, 2 is positive, epsilon is approaching 0 from the positive direction, so again, positive. And then think if we have like a really small positive value, uh, minus 7 over a really small positive value, we're going to end up with a negative value. Okay. And then uh, for J1, we've got a really small uh, positive value in each of our epsilons, right? And, but we're really going to end up, the, the, the value is not going to affect the uh, numerator that much, so we're going to have a negative 49 uh, approximately on the top and a negative 14 on the bottom here. So that we'll end up with a positive value. Okay, and then for K1 that's just positive. So as you can see, we start out positive, we have a one sign change from positive to negative, another sign change from negative to positive, so we have two sign changes. Okay, so let's consider epsilon as it approaches zero from the negative direction. So again, we have positive one, positive two, and then if epsilon is approaching from the negative direction, we have a negative sign. If you think if you have a small negative value, minus seven, over a really small negative value, we're going to end up with a positive value because you'll have a negative on the top over negative, okay? And as epsilon gets really small, we're going to basically approach uh, positive infinity, so. Then if you look uh, at J1, we have, again, really small values here that don't affect the numerator and denominator uh, that much. So we have a negative 49 over a negative 14, which gives us a positive value. And then K1 is positive. So we look here, we have a sign change from positive to negative and another one from negative to positive. So we have, again, two sign changes. So no matter what, we're going to have two poles in our right-hand plane. 
which is going to cause our system to be unstable. Okay, thank you for watching.